Welcome to the session on webhooks. My name is Wim Decourt. At Soliance, I lead the FileMaker development team. We have about 30 full-time FileMaker developers, so it's a great place to be. I'm also very active in the FileMaker community, and I have been from day one when I discovered FileMaker. And I have found the FileMaker community to be extremely welcoming. Um, and it helped me through my learning curve 25 years ago, and I'm sure it could do the same for you. I have been fortunate enough to be a speaker at most of the past developer conferences, and a lot of my sessions have been about server deployments, about security considerations, and about integrating with other systems. And that is what this session will be all about. I hope you enjoy it. As I mentioned in my intro, integrations are a big part of what I do, and we are going to talk about integrations in this session and as we talk about the powerful concept of webhooks. And what I hope to do with this session is I, I hope that you get inspired to investigate further. I want you to be curious on how you can best set up robust integrations. So why the interest in webhooks? Uh, with webhooks, we're talking about system-to-system -system integrations. And we all use a, a wide variety of systems. We have our FileMaker system that sits probably at the core of everything that we do, um, but we use other systems, and we use them because they, they solve a problem for us. Uh, th that's the essence of digital transformation right there, because we, we use a system for what it's good at. For instance, we don't want to deal with the regulations around credit card storage, so we use a payment processor. Same with an accounting package. We don't want to recode all of the accounting rules. These rules exist and they are encapsulated very well in accounting packages, so we use them. Or you have a web store and you take orders online. Or you use Box or Dropbox for document management because they do that so well. All of these systems generate data that you will want to use, and you will want to use it without any user intervention. Right? You don't want a user to have to, to download data and move it between systems or, or be responsible for transforming data from one format to another. You all want it to be done automatically and you want it in real time because responsiveness is important. So how do we get data? As FileMaker developers, we tend to be FileMaker-centric when it comes to problem solving. So we would probably look at uh, doing something from inside FileMaker that would pull the other system once in a while to say, hey, do you have new data for me? And once in a while, there will be new data and we will receive it, then we can parse it and use it. But a lot of the times, obviously depending on the frequency in which you poll, there will be no data on the other side. So what are we doing then? Right? We are wasting time and resources asking the other system repeatedly over and over, do you have new data for me? And there's, there's a real trade-off that is going on here, right? Because if we don't ask it frequently, then the data that we receive may be stale, right? It is not real time. Um, it may get in the way of our responsiveness. But if we do ask very frequently, we are wasting all of that processing time and resources. Now, that may be fine if you just have the one system, but what if you have multiple systems to integrate with, right? Then you have all these other systems that you have to poll on a particular schedule and try and see if they have data for you. So that is not very scalable, right? It'll, it'll come to a point where on your FileMaker server, uh, you will simply not find time, a, a suitable time slot to do anything else because it's so busy polling all of the other systems to see if there's new data for it. Also, if we look at it from the other side, uh, for the other system, it does not want to get polled by potentially tens or thousands or hundreds of thousands of clients continuously to see if there's new data. Uh, so we want our FileMaker systems and any system that we build to be good citizens as well and not overburden the other systems. So ideally, what we want to have is something like this, where two systems are each doing their own thing. Until an event happens, on the other system. And when that happens, we want the other system to push the data to FileMaker, to our systems. And if necessary, our system can respond with a, an acknowledgement to say, yep, we got the data, thank you very much. And then both systems go back to, um, to minding their own business. In a scenario like this, there is no wasted resources and it is completely real time. The data will flow when there is new data uh, to flow. Now, that whole concept was first introduced and, and expressed 
in a blog post by Jeff Lindsay about 15 years ago. Um, and, and that's where the, the, the term webhooks was first coined. And I know it is not done to put that many words on the slide, so here's the short version. If we go back, though, to, um, to this, let's call it the official definition, um, there's two things that we can call out immediately, and that is the, the name for it, right? Uh, in this blog post, the term webhooks was used for the first time, um, and, and you can see it's also often referred to as callbacks. And sometimes you will hear a third name, HTTP push API. Now, what's also important is that this also describes how the data is going to flow. The system that generates the data has the address of the destination system, um, which is going to be a URL, and uses HTTP POST to get the data there. If we take it back to our FileMaker deployment, then in order to make a webhook work from another system, we need a web server of some kind, right? Because we need to give that other system an address, which is going to be a URL, because the other system will push data through the HTTP uh, post uh, protocol. So we need a web server. We need something that will generate a URL, and then we will register or give that URL to the other system so that it knows where to send stuff. And then when an event happens at the other system, it will express the data around that event in whatever format it chooses. Uh, what we're looking at here is a meeting request from uh, Microsoft 365. And, and we have no control over that data format, right? It could be, it could be XML for all we, all we know. Um, we don't have control over what events the other system handles or the data and data format that is going to send over. But the data that it does have, it will send to the URL that we have given it. And that's how our system will receive the data. So we have a couple of conundrums that we need to think about um, when we think about whether we can use the other system's webhook functionality in relation to our systems. And the first one is we have to consider whether we can receive it. And at first glance, when we think of the, of the FileMaker platform, um, and especially with the data API, it is a web server, obviously, and it can give us a URL. The URL that we're looking at there is the URL with the endpoints, the records endpoints, that allows you to create records. Uh, it allows you to send something across HTTPS post, um, which will create a records on the FileMaker side. So it looks at first glance that we can use that mechanism. We can construct a URL like this and give it to the system. But can we really, right? Because the, the way that the FileMaker Data API works is that it requires prior authentication. You have to log in to the FileMaker file through the Data API first, which will give you a token, and then you'll have to use that token in a records endpoint request like this one uh, to prove that you are uh, authenticated and authorized to send data. So that's something to consider. The other thing that we, um, that we need to think about is um, we need to be able to work with the data format that is being sent to us, right? And, and the example that we have uh, on the screen there is that meeting request from Microsoft 365. Um, and obviously, if you're somewhat familiar with the FileMaker Data API, the JSON format that we're looking at there, that is not the JSON format that the FileMaker Data API expects. So clearly already, even though it's JSON and most of the systems these days use JSON, they will use a JSON grammar that the FileMaker Data API does not understand. So that's something to consider. And for all we know, like I said, the other system may be sending XML, right? XML is still around and many systems still use it. So we need to make sure that we can work with the data that is being sent over. So authentication, uh, as we mentioned before, that is something that we need to consider. Um, how does the other system get authenticated into our FileMaker system so that the data can be sent over? One of the other things that we, we will need to consider, we probably don't want to be accepting data from, from just about anybody. So there is an aspect here that we'll need to validate the source, um, the, the sender who is sending us some data. And obviously, what it is that, that we are receiving, uh, we need to be able to make sure that we understand what it is so that we can, we can take it in. 
and even more than just understanding the, the data format of what is being sent, uh, there's a chance that we, that we will want to do some validation on the data that it contains to make sure that the data is in, is in the proper shape uh, before we take that in to our FileMaker systems. Now that we have a solid understanding of what webhooks are and how they function, let's look at what is available to us in the Clarus ecosphere. On the Clarus FileMaker side, we have the FileMaker Server Data API, and that one is available in Clarus FileMaker Server and Clarus FileMaker Cloud. And that seems to be the most likely candidate uh, for receiving data that some other system is going to send us. And, and we've talked about some conundrums in, in the previous sections, so those still apply and we'll have to tackle those. We also still have the FileMaker Server XML API, and I have it listed here slightly grayed out because it is, it is an older technology. Uh, and I personally would not want to build a strategy of setting up a system-to-system -system integration uh, on the XML API. I would much prefer to use the data API. Now FileMaker Server also has an ODBC and JDBC interface. And we know from the webhook definition that we can't really use that, right? A webhook, by definition, uses the HTTP protocol uh, to exchange data, and that is not what ODBC or JDBC does. But we still have that conundrum of uh, how to make sure that the other system is authenticated into our FileMaker file so that it can send data, right? So uh, the FileMaker Data API works with that two-step process. You have to authenticate first, get a token, and then use the token. Now, most other systems uh, are not set up to handle that, right? Most other systems where you register the URL to act as the address that they will send data to, they just expect to be able to send data full stop. They, um, so they will not be automatically capable of doing that two-step authentication that is required with the FileMaker Data API. And of course, as we know, FileMaker Data API expects the JSON to be in a particular format. And it's a given that is, um, unless you happen to build the other system or, or have a lot of control over the other system, uh, the other system more typically will not send JSON uh, if it is sen sending JSON, JSON in the format that the Data API expects. And, and we still have to consider that the other system may not be sending JSON to begin with, right? It could still be XML. So it should be clear that if we want to use the FileMaker Server Data API, that there are some things that we'll have to put in the middle, right? So this is what we had in mind, two systems and events, data flows to the uh, FileMaker Data API records endpoint. And, and now we know that that is likely not what is going to work for us, right? So we need something in the middle, something that will be able, still be able to generate a URL that we can register with the other system. Um, and then what is going to happen is that when the other system has an event and it, uh, it collects the data that it wants to send to us, it is going to send that data to our thing that sits in the middle. And our thing in the middle will be responsible for transforming the data from whatever format it receives it in into the data format that the FileMaker Server Data API understands. Now, because we're putting something in the middle there, we could have that thing in the middle use the ODBC or JDBC interface. But for now, we are going to stick with looking at this from the data API. In the Clarus ecosphere, that thing in the middle, that is Clarus Connect, right? That is what it's there for. So let's look a little closer at Clarus Connect. Now, everything that Clarus Connect does is already based on something which happens in some other system. And it does everything when it happens. So it's real time. It's going to be very responsive to the events that happen in the other system. And the connectors that Clarus Connect makes available to us, the way that they work is that as soon as you use one of these connectors, what happens behind the scenes is that Clarus Connect will generate a URL and register that URL with the, uh, with the other system so that the other system when one of the events that Clarus Connect is set up for, and those are listed uh, under the column triggers there on the screenshot, when the event happens on the other system, the other system will know where to send the data, uh, and the data will be received by, by Clarus Connect. So you can think of all of these connectors that Clarus Connect makes available to us as nothing more than pre-built webhooks. Now you may be thinking, 
what if I have a system that is not covered by one of the many connectors that Claris Connect has? And does that mean that I'm dead in the water? And the answer to that is no, because Claris Connect makes available to you a generic webhook, right? If you have another system that is not covered by any of the connectors, you can still use Claris Connect and, and you would use this generic webhook endpoint. And the way that that works is when you pick the generic webhook as the, the trigger, as the beginning of your flow, and you give it a name, then Claris Connect will automatically generate a URL for you. And what you do then is you take that URL, you register it yourself, um, because obviously it's not automated at that point. You go to the other system and you enter the URL that Claris Connect has given to you. As soon as you do that, um, your Claris Connect is ready for action, right? When a, an event happens in the other system, it will send the data uh, to this URL. And it may be obvious, but uh, it's certainly worth uh, calling out. Because it is part of the Claris product line, Claris Connect has built-in integrators and connectors to FileMaker, right? Uh, and that is something that is so obvious that it's sometimes overlooked, but it's one of its strength points. So let's see that in action. In our FileMaker file, we're keeping track of books. As you can see, we only have a handful of fields for each book, and there's two that we are particularly interested in for each book, namely the title and the price. And that is because we have another system that when a new book gets added in that other system, can send us JSON for that new book. Now, this is the JSON that we will receive from that other system. If we were to send data to the Pharmaca Server Data API to add a new record in our database, then we would have to create JSON in this particular format. As you can see between the two, we have a mismatch in both the overall structure, but also in the specific field names for both the title and for the price. So that's something that we will need to overcome. And for that, we will use Claris Connect. In Claris Connect, we can add a new flow. We'll just call it demo. And as the trigger for the flow, the thing that will start the flow, we will pick the generic webhook. And that is because the other system that is sending us JSON uh, for the new books is not covered by any of the existing connectors. So we'll pick the webhook. Let's call it book demo. As soon as we create it, Claris Connect will generate a specific and a unique URL for us that we can use, that we can register with the other system so that it knows where to send data whenever a new book is added in that other system. Right? So we're in the process of setting that up on the Claris Connect side. So Claris Connect, has, having generated this URL for us, will now wait for us to send something to that URL so that it can learn the structure of the data that it will receive and we will use Postman to mimic being the other system. So we will create a new request in Postman. It'll be a post, and we will use the um, URL that Claris Connect has generated for us. Obviously, we will need a body, which is going to be JSON, and we'll paste in an example of the JSON from the other system. There we go. If we send this, we receive a response from Claris Connect saying that everything is fine. And in Claris Connect, we can now save this trigger because it has received something. It knows what to do with that. So the, the webhook is correctly set up and is fully functional. So the next thing that we will want to do is add an action. And we will pick FileMaker Server because we want that data to create a new record in our FileMaker database. And I already have a connection to my FileMaker server set up. So it's this bookstore on 19. And it's in this connection to the FileMaker server connector that the authentication is going to happen, right? Claris Connect can do that two-step authentication, call on the session endpoint on FileMaker server for that particular file, get a token, then use that token to create the record. So the two-step process is taken care of by Claris Connect for us automatically. And by virtue of having that connection, 
to our file. It knows exactly what layouts we have in our file. So we'll take the book layout. And Clarus Connect can interrogate that layout and see what fields we have on that layout. So we are interested in title and price. So for the title field, we now get to pick from the JSON received by Clarus Connect. We can now pick the title and do the same for price. So Clarus Connect has parsed that JSON that it has received and makes it available to us as a very easy click and select way of transferring that data over. All right, so we have title and we have price. We can save that action, enable the flow, and let's make sure that we can see FileMaker. As you can see, we have one record here in FileMaker and we'll go back to Postman and send this data again. Now this data will flow to Claris Connect where we have the flow set up and it should add a new record in our FileMaker database. So we'll send it. We get confirmation from Claris Connect that everything is fine. And on the FileMaker side, we see that we have a new record with the title and price matching what we have sent from the other system. So that is how easy it is to set up a generic webhook in Claris Connect that can receive data from any other system, really. Now, within our project here in Claris Connect, if I click on webhooks, I can now see all the webhooks that I have enabled. And here's the book demo that we have just uh, configured. And this is where, if I wanted to use some sort of authentication, which is going to be token-based uh, for Claris Connect, that I can give to the other system to say, hey, automatically include this token so that I know you're authorized to call my flow. This is where you would set up that authentication, which is which was one of those conundrums that we covered that we, with a webhook like this, we don't want to receive data from just about anybody. We want to make sure that we can validate who's send sending that to us. And one of the ways that we can validate is by using authentication to the webhooks. And this kind of authentication is not like the authentication for the data API, which is a two-step process. By using a token as authentication for the webhook, it's a one-step process. The other system can still just make one call to send us the data, and in its header, it would include a token so that Claris Connect is satisfied that it's allowed to send its data. But say that Claris Connect is not your thing. Right? You still have that event that happens on the other system that you want the data from. And you still need to build something that sits in the middle between that other system and your FileMaker system um, that has the capability of generating a URL, receiving the data, transforming the data, and sending it over to your FileMaker server. So from this point forward, it's really a make or buy decision. You can certainly go out and buy yourself a webhook. Um, I have a number of services listed here. Uh, see, these are some of the bigger ones that will allow you to do something very similar to Claris Connect. So think of them as your relay service, right? They, they will be able to give you that URL that you register with the other system and, and do all the transformation and data forwarding. And like Claris Connect, these are subscription services. So they have various price levels, but they also have varying levels of real time. Not all of these systems will forward the data as they receive it immediately. So that is something that you would need to consider for your project, whether real time is, uh, is mandatory or if it's okay to have a bit of a delay. Also, not all of these systems have native support for FileMaker. Uh, and that means that that second leg, sending the data over to the data API, may be something that you'll have to build on their platform yourself. You can also take it one step further because what we need, in essence, is a little web service running on a web server. And often you'll hear these um, referred to as microservice, because as web services go, these are, these are small. They don't need to do much. They don't need to consume a lot of resources, hence the term micro, right? So a web server with a web service, how do you do that? Well, that means that you can really pick any of the big web scripting languages, right? And I have a lot of them listed there. So you can pick the language, the web scripting language that you are familiar with or that your client mandates that you use and build your own web service to act as that man in the middle and receive the data, transform it and send it over. Now that sending over obviously requires a connection to the data API and, and our community, our FileMaker community is great because many of the developers there have built what is called wrappers for those web scripting technologies. And those wrappers allow 
somebody who is familiar with any of those web scripting languages to use one of these wrappers uh, and stay within their comfort zone. The Python wrapper, for instance, exposes all of the data API functionality as native Python things. So the Python developer wouldn't need to learn all the ins and outs of the data API. They can just use whatever the wrapper exposes as functionality. So that website that I have listed collects many of these wrappers. And you can certainly go to GitHub and do a search on the FileMaker data API and turn up a good number of these wrappers that are actively being maintained. And they are great to use when you, when you do that. Now, certainly building your own web service that sits in the middle, that may sound scary, and it really is not. Uh, it's, it can be very rewarding to get into that. And if I had to build something from scratch right now of these web scripting languages, I would probably pick Node.js as the, as the web scripting language to, uh, the, to use. And the main reason for that is that when you look at Node.js, it's obviously it's a, it's a JavaScript-based uh, framework. And if we look at all of the FileMaker realm, we have noticed over the years that JavaScript skills have become more prevalent and more necessary. FileMaker 19, for instance, gives us great and easy integration with JavaScript libraries and JavaScript code through the web viewer. So as a FileMaker developer, as you're building out your JavaScript skills for use in your FileMaker solutions, you can turn around and use those same JavaScript skills to build a, a tiny web services that can act as a webhook for pretty much any system. So it seems like a natural fit to stick with something that is based on JavaScript. Furthermore, what I would do is I would probably build in some, uh, some local storage on the web service side. A and by doing that, it allows me to decouple the webhook functionality from my FileMaker server in the sense that I can, I can have the web service store the data that it receives from the other system just temporarily, but locally, so that I can take my FileMaker server down uh, during maintenance or for updates or, or in a disaster recovery scenario when, when the network goes down, power goes out, the FileMaker server crashes, then the other system can continue to send data to, to your web service uh, and the web service will store it locally until the FileMaker server is back ready uh, to receive all of the data. Now, I fully realize that many FileMaker developers will shy away from, from what looks like the heavy-duty coding that is required to set up your own web service in any of these web scripting languages. But like I said, it's, it, it is far less scary than it looks. And also, there are great tools that, that help us with that. And I want to highlight one of these tools named Node-RED. Node-RED, as the name implies, is built on Node.js. So it runs on a Node.js server under the hood. And it, it basically gives us a very visual layer to build flows, to basically build web services uh, on top of Node.js without having to learn all the ins and outs of setting up a web service in, in Node.js. To highlight that it is very lightweight, I, I run my uh, Node.red on a Raspberry Pi 3, which is a $35 computer. So that's how easy it is to, to build that into, into your infrastructure. And Node-RED itself, as I mentioned, it's a visual flow builder, right? It's a browser-based uh, visual tool that allows you to build your web service, the thing that can receive data uh, through webhook functionality, it allows you to build that very, very visually. It's as simple as dragging blocks into place, connecting them, making small changes to, to the data as it flows between those blocks, and away you go. And to underline how active our community is in these things, Louis de la Para created uh, all of the required blocks that we would need to talk to the FileMaker Data API for use in Node-RED, meaning that so you can just install Node-RED inside your network, uh, fire it up, and uh, install what is called a palette that has all of these pre-built FileMaker Data API functionality for you. So let's see that in action. Let's set up a webhook um, using Node-RED. In our FileMaker file, we are tracking books, and we just have a handful of fields for each book that we are tracking. There is also another system involved that when a book is added to that other system, it can send us the JSON representation 
the data of that new book. And that's what we want to see happen. We want to take that data from the other system and automatically create a new book in our FileMaker file. Now this is the JSON structure that the other system will send us. Given what we have in FileMaker, if we wanted to use the data API to create a new book record and populate the title and the price, which is the two pieces of data that we will receive from the other system, then the JSON structure of what the FileMaker data API would expect would look something like what we have on the right hand side. And as we can see, that's totally different than what the other system is sending us. So we have a mismatch between the pure structure of the JSON that the other system sends, but also in the names of the fields, right? The other system calls it book underscore title, and in FileMaker we just call it title. So both the structure and the difference in field names is something that we will need to overcome if we need to be able to receive data from the other system. And for this demo, we will use Node-RED. Node-RED is a visual flow builder. It's a visual code builder that sits on top of Node-RED. Uh, and in this particular case, I have it running on a very simple Raspberry Pi that sits in my network. So the promise of Node-RED is that it will allow you to build exactly what we need, which is a webhook, which is a web service running on a web server that can receive the data from the other system, transform it, and send it along to the FileMaker server data API so that the new record gets created. And with Node-RED, we can do that without writing much of any code. And because we need a webhook, we need a URL for the other system to talk to, the first thing that we will need to add is an HTTP in node. And it's that node that will give us the ability to receive something. And in this case, it'll be an HTTP post that we will receive from the other system. And we can create a, an endpoint that will be listening for whatever the other system is sending. Our webhook also needs to respond to t let the other system know that we, that we have received something. And we will cheat a little bit, but we will set up that response to always be HTTP response code 200, meaning everything is okay. And with this, we have a fully functional webhook. And that's, that's all the code that there is to it, really, in Node-RED to create a webhook, a, a very tiny, a micro web service that will listen on this endpoint and respond. Now, it doesn't do much of anything. It doesn't do any processing, but this is the essence of our webhook. In order to be able to inspect exactly what it is receiving, we will add a debug node and hook it up to the endpoint so that it will receive the input from, from that endpoint. We will set it up so that we can see the complete message and we will deploy that. Deploying or saving will actually signal to Node-RED that this is now active. So with this we have an active listening webhook. And to test that we will use Postman. We will use Postman to mimic what the other system is doing. So we will create a new request and the URL that we will give to the other system will be the base URL of our Node-RED installation. It'll be a POST request. And at the end of the base URL, we will add the name of our endpoint, which is Books Demo. So this is the URL that we will give to the other system to say, if you have something, if an event happens, if a new book gets added to your system, this is where you have to send the data. And the data will be in the body and it will be JSON, and we will just copy the example from the other system. And now we have the same request that the other system will be using. So if we send this, we can see that our webhook has responded with HTTP status code 200, just like we expected to, because that's how we coded it. And over here in Node-RED, on the right-hand side, in the debug section, we can see the complete thing that our webhook has received from the other system. And in the payload, we will see that we have the JSON structure fully parsed of what it has received. So we have the book title, book price of that JSON data. So now we know that we have a fully functional webhook, right? It can receive data from the other system. Now it's time to take that JSON, what we receive from that other system, and then transform it and pass it along to FileMaker Server. That transformation we will do through the function node. The function node will receive 
what the endpoint receives. And this is where we will change it so that it's in the same format that Farmer expects. And this is where we will use a little bit of JavaScript code, nothing major, and certainly well within your skills, but we will create a new variable called data and it will be JSON. And we know that in FileMaker the title field is just called title. So this is where we have to grab from the JSON that we received the little piece of data around the title. And this is where Node-RED really shines because over here in the debug node this is where the, the book title is that we received from the other system. And I can just hover over this little button here and copy the path of where the book title is within that JSON structure. And I can just paste it in, in here. And I can do the exact same thing for price. Find the price data point in the other JSON, copy its path, paste it in here, and we're done. So lines one through four transform the JSON as we receive it into JSON that FileMaker will understand. What we need to do now is to make sure that the function node will pass the modified thing, the, the, the message, in Node-RED speak, anything that is passed between nodes in a flow is called a message, that the message is modified so that the, the next node in line, which will be the node that, that will create the FileMaker records, will have that full modified message. So what we will do is we will say the message payload will now have a data node that is equal to the one that we've just created. All right, so whatever we created here, we will add to the payload. And then line number six will return the message and that message will be passed on to the next node. So we can save that. So with the function node, we have transformed the JSON. So now it's time to pass it on to FileMaker. And for that, we will grab the create node from the FileMaker palette the create node will receive what the function node outputs and if we go and configure the create node this is where we have to specify a data API client and I have one that's pre-configured but if we go and look quickly at what is required all we need really is the the DNS name of our FileMaker server the name of our FileMaker file and then a set of credentials that uh, is allowed uh, in the privilege set to talk to the data API So that's what the client is all about. So the client will do the authentication and that two-step authentication, that first login in to get a token to then use the token to create a node, that is automatically taken care of by this node, right? I don't have to add a node to first log in, grab the token, store the token somewhere. Node Red, and specifically the um, FileMaker palette that uh, Louis de la Para has created for us, takes care of that automatically. We also have to specify a layout. Anything in FileMaker is context-based, so we have to let this node know what is the name of the layout that we will be using to establish context to know what table we are creating this record in. And in FileMaker we have a layout called book that has the necessary fields. Uh, it actually has too many fields, we are, we're just interested in title and price, but this layout has the fields required to receive the data that we will be sending. So we hard code that name and the data that the create node will receive is exactly that message payload data that we have created in the function node. So we will save that and we will hook up the response node to the output from FileMaker. And again, this would be a little more complex in real life. We would need to check for errors here and then respond accordingly. But for now, this will do. So I'll, we'll deploy that, and as soon as we deploy it, it's now listening for anything that is being sent to that webhook, to that endpoint. So let's move a few things out of the way so you can see we have one record in FileMaker. We will go back to pretending to be the other system, and we will send that exact same JSON again to Node-RED, to our webhook. We're sending. Node-RED has responded that everything is fine, just like we expect it to be. And in FileMaker, we see that we now have two records, not just one. If we go look at the records, we see that we have received the title and the price from the other system, exactly like it's being sent. 
And that is how you use Node-RED to set up a webhook. And as you can see, it is exceedingly simple. Now that we have seen webhooks in action, I want to call out a very specific use case. And we will not cover it in this presentation, but we will do it in a number of follow-up videos that talk about this thing specifically. And here's the use case. What if the other system sends us XML? Not JSON, but XML. And that data obviously still needs to end up in your FileMaker system. Now, if you look at Claris Connect, and we know that in Claris Connect we have a generic webhook, so it can really receive data from, uh, from any other system. But Claris Connect cannot receive XML, it can only receive JSON. So if you do have Claris Connect in your arsenal, that may feel like you cannot use Claris Connect and you'll have to do something else. Well, that's not true. In this follow-up video, I will show you how to combine Node-RED with Claris Connect. To build something extremely simple, in Node-RED that will take in the XML from the system that sends it, transforms it into JSON and then passes it on to Claris Connect where you can then build uh, uh, and use your skills to build the rest of the flow in Claris Connect. And when you look at that XML that we have on the screen, you'll note that it's, uh, it's a little peculiar. It's still about books, the, the same books that we have used in the rest of the demo, but it contains four books. And the third book that it has there has multiple authors. So as the data gets to FileMaker, we will have to take that apart and iterate over this. And also, very likely, if we have our data architecture right, create a many-to-many a -many relationship between books and authors. So all of that will be covered by, um, by that video. Now, we will take the same XML input from the other system and we'll, we will use Node-RED to send it to the FileMaker Data API. And, and here too, you may frown at this and say, well, the FileMaker Data API only receives JSON. So how we do that? So we'll do the same thing. We'll, um, we'll have Node-RED receive the XML from the other system, transform it into JSON, and then iterate over that JSON to, uh, to do the proper um, taking that XML apart in separate books and do the um, necessary record creation for the many-to-many -many relationships between books and authors. So look for that in follow-up videos to this presentation. I hope to have made you curious enough to explore the concept of webhooks and how you can use them to orchestrate your integrations. Feel free to reach out to me on the Famica community or through the Solion Consulting website. Thank you for being here.